truth is, the policemen came right out of the community where the sheep will live. Why would anybody think that they're going to be any smarter than the rest of the animals out there? So you think they're, most of them will go along. Well, I told Philippus to his face on tape, I said, well, what you've done here, sir, you're probably going to pay for in the future. Well, it, it's absolutely true. He's, he is a, is a big exception. There are only about three sheriffs in the entire country who know what their authority is and have the, have the guts to take a stand. This is the only police chief that I've ever heard of who's taken the proper stand. So if you want to know if they're going to go along with it, yeah, they'll go along with it to get their little paycheck. See, they've sold their country out for what, $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year? That's pretty cheap, isn't it? It's pretty sick. <laughs> it is. And, and for maybe they'll get a retirement check in 20 or 30 years. So mm -hmm. they sold their whole country out. They sold their children's future. They sold their grandchildren's future and their great-grandchildren, whom they haven't even seen yet. Now, Mr. Cooper, I understand what you're talking about, and I find out more every day. Just, just a year ago, I still couldn't accept some of this. And it, it I mean, even you, you yourself, when I talked to you last week, said it took you years of studying a long time ago to finally understand it all. And it... People's mindset, they think of the government as made up of the same go-along, get-alongs. They don't understand the avarice and just how vicious and demented and inbred these people are. Well, in the first place, you're wrong in your premise. They don't think at all. That's why commercials are 30 seconds long. That is the attention span of the average American sheeple. They can't think beyond 30 seconds. That's why no American company... Our, our, our business, our group plans ahead more than about two or three months. That's true. We have no long-term strategic goal for this country. It's, that's it's... right, and that's why we're getting beat by the Marxist socialist communists, because they have five-year plans, 10-year plans, 15-year plans, 25-year plans, and 50-year plans, and they stick to them. Man, absolutely. Well, it's scary then. What's going to happen? It's just going to be, I think that... Either the American people are going to become slaves within just a few years, uh, and it's going to be an enslavement like, like nobody can even dream of, uh, and, and it's going to extend worldwide, and we're the only people that can stop it because we're the only people in the world uh, still who have the, the capability... Have the arms. ...and the arms to be able to stop it. Or there's going to be a civil war which will last between 5 and 15 years to restore constitutional Republican government and freedom and liberty worldwide. Well, that's the point. Even though most people are sheep, there, there is that between 5 and 10 million people that once it starts, I think more people will come out. And I see, I don't want this to happen. This is just going to wreck the nation. I don't want it to happen either. Ever since I saw the plan back in 1971 and 72 when I was uh, on the intelligence briefing team for SYNCPAC fleet to bring about one world totalitarian socialist government, and when I saw that the United States was behind the whole thing, this is not coming from without. The United States created the United Nations. Yes, sir. The United States created the European Union that has just been formed. Well, you're saying the United, the United States. The United States is acting as the world police force right now. Well, you're saying the United States. Wouldn't you say a foreign aristocracy out of New York and Boston nope. that controls our nation? The United States. Okay, who? Corporate United States with its headquarters in Washington, D.C. District of Columbia. It is the stated and avowed policy of the United States government to create world government over the ashes of all sovereign nations and existing religions around this world. Why don't you... I'm telling you that I saw that plan while I was in the Office of Naval Intelligence on the intelligence briefing team, the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet. Would you elaborate on that uh, just a little bit? That's, that's what the Behold a Pale Horse is all about. I understand. <laughs> that's what's in that book. Well, I know the story, but a lot of people that are listening, and I'm sure that will go out and get Behold a Pale Horse, will talk about those military briefings. And I guess uh, these people were proud that they were part of this power oh absolutely this has been a goal for this it's the reason this country was founded and americans don't understand that the founding fathers many of them were deists they were members of the secret society some of them were members of the illuminati they created this country and gave the common man freedom for the first time in the history of the world meeting a king in his own right they told him what he had to do to keep his freedom and what he would lose if he didn't do it 
And when they did this, giving the common man freedom, it toppled all the kings and queens off their thrones all around the world, and that was the major goal of establishing this country. If the common man could have been vigilant and maintained his freedom and not given in to the I want and I want and I deserve and you've got to feed me and you've got to do this and you've got to take care of me and change my diaper and wipe my butt and, and get me a job and entertain me and all that kind of stuff, which always leads back into what they call democracy, which always leads into socialism, which ends goal stated by Marx and Lenin is communism. What did the you Island first think? Said democracy is absolutely indispensable to socialism. What did you first think when you saw, saw this openly being discussed in the top levels of the military? Well, it shocked the hell out of me, but they thought I was one of them. It was an accident that I got in there. I'd been a member of the Demolay Society when I was... 13 years old, only attended three meetings, and then my father was transferred to Japan. I never saw another lodge and never went to another meeting, and that was the end of that. When I filled out all my documentation for my top-secret QSI security clearance, which was required to be able to work in the command center and on the briefing team at Singpak Fleet, um, I didn't see DMLA on there, so I checked Freemason. And when I checked Freemason, that's what opened all the doors and, and uh, got me the security clearance and put me in those positions to be able to see what I saw. And I think the hand of God was working when that happened so that I would be able to warn his people of what was coming. And I've been doing that ever since. I didn't see absolutely everything, but I saw enough to give me uh, an, an edge and a, and a vast head start on anybody that's ever lived before in the public sector that's not normally privy to this information. And I spent uh, the last, well, ever since <laughs> uh, researching to, to find out what it all meant and where we're going. Well, just to go back to what's happening here locally in Central Texas, we know that there are dozens of different alphabet soup agencies that have the helicopters with the night, uh, with the forward infrared, with the forward infrared looking radar and all the rest of this, but why why are they gearing up like this? Why are why is our county building a three acre under the roof helicopter base? Uh, just the warehouse is three acres under the roof. Why are our police going and training at Fort Hood with the military? What does this mean to the public? Well, because they know what's coming. They know that there's a hardcore group of American men and women who are who are devout religious moral people who love freedom and are dedicated to the concept of liberty and freedom and will fight to protect and defend constitutional Republican government against anything that comes along. And when, when that begins, it's, it's going to be a, a terrible, terrible thing. I've spent most of my adult life trying to warn people and wake up enough people so that this did not have to happen because I know it's going to be terrible. Now, President Clinton has now openly come out, and I'd actually read what they were pushing three years ago, and I was talking about it, about the national ID card and biometrics, thumb scanning, retina scanning. And since 94 in Texas, they've been thumb scanning us to get driver's license, and people just stampede in there like sheep. We had a big protest down there where I was arrested, I guess it's six or eight months ago now. What does it mean to the public when we have one card that our insurance and our credit cards and our bank accounts and our receipts and everything is on that one card. It means the public is stupid and they're already a hair's breadth away from total enslavement. If they had any brains at all, they would have said, no, I'm not taking that. And if you don't like it, that's tough. And all those businesses and all those driver's license bureaus and all those uh, the, the revenue that it brings in for all those cities and counties would have just evaporated in smoke and they would have backed down and said, okay, okay, you, you don't have to do it.